All right. Hello and welcome. My name is Phineas Olofsson, and I am the host of the ELSF podcast. The Eternal Life Society Foundation is a by the people, for the people, research foundation. No illusion, no agenda, no control. Just the desire for truth and the creation of a loving and harmonious planet. Today is September 7th, 2021, and we are talking with the wonderful and intelligent Brother Gaia, who is representing the Brothers of Gaia. This is episode two of our podcast. Let's get our minds open and our hearts flowing. All right, time to get the guest of honor in here. Oh, exciting stuff. I'm excited. Oh, it's time to learn. Yes. Oh, okay, all right. Uh, really quickly introduce yourself and then you can take the floor. Of course, of course. So I am Brother Gaia. I My primary work of um, study is paramagnetism, and I work to uh, bring paramagnetism to the entire planet, the knowledge of it, the application of it, as well as the enhancement of society with it. I represent Brothers of Gaia. We have been doing this for about four years, and um, it has only been gaining in evidence, testimony, and uh, uh, honestly, uh, excitement <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's what's up wow <laughs> man i'm so excited man just just everything about you i've been following you for so long and every time i see you you just bring a smile to my face because i can feel your energy through the phone and you motivate me so much to just like be the best person possible and to help as many people as possible so i'm so grateful to be able to talk to you <laughs> thank you brother thank you and i'm thank you for creating this platform for all of us to talk about whatever we want to talk about you know, yeah. whatever elevates society and, you know, there's too many dark things out here. So Yeah, they, they, they're trying to separate us as much as possible. And my goal is to bridge everyone together in a single place where you can actually go to find truth. So <sighs> <sighs> this is a perfect place to do it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, take it away, man. I know you've got a lot to say. Of course. Yeah. So um, basically, I'm just going to give an update about the Earth Grid essentially my whole understanding of it over the period of um, what it's been a whole year since I had pretty much gained a full concept of it to be able to explain to the collective how important it actually is. And so um, what I'm going to start with is that, you know, our world is um, it's organized in specific lines, geometries, and they're not by um, by mistake. There's a there's a force underneath us that there's multiple forces underneath us and above us that dictate how um, how these things come about. And so um, I realized early on in uh, civilization's time, you know, the beginnings of civilization, there were uh, we recognized these things and we we use the harmonic geometries. We use the the Earth's frequency, and we use the the volcanic minerals which held the Earth's frequency so well, and we use them to build, and so that enhanced our our lifetimes to up to five hundred to thousands of years, you know, and it also enhanced all of the the organisms that surround us. So um, you know, we had very very large behemoths of what what we currently have now, you know, compared to the largest animal we have, uh, there was a very, very large amount of oxygen, monoatomic minerals, which are multidimensional minerals, which <laughs> enhance our, uh, our life vessels to expand even, uh, even more to the idea of what we could be. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. So that's what previous society, uh, was doing. And then we had, at some point, a paradigm shift. And this paradigm shift led to um, those who recognized these powers hit it from some generation at some point. And then they created these structures which debilitated the, the Earth's frequency, the accumulation of photons, those energies in the environment which enhanced us. And they created a hierarchy of power and so now we see that um even in uh ancient egypt there was uh pre there was a a practice you know amongst the ancient egyptian mystery schools where the pharaohs the elite 
would uh, would eat the ormus that was accumulating within the pyramids. Wow. And it was only the elites. All, you know, all of the, the civilization around, they, they were enhanced by, you know, the pyramid, but the actual material that was collecting to, you know, extend their lifetimes was not given to them. It was given to the elites. And it has been that way for centuries. Wow. Even into what we currently see, those, that pyramidal shape, we see them on our government buildings. We see them on, uh, we see the Eiffel Tower. We see them on uh, many, uh, many structures they've currently created within the last, you know, century, the 500 years. Even more recent than that. <laughs> wow, it all, it all rings so true. It makes sense. That's, that's absolutely wild. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And so we've, um, there's vortex researchers actually who have brought this information to light by um, studying the indigenous cultures who, you know, centered on these areas where the earth's resonance was very strong. Mm -hmm. And they studied them and they saw that the difference between indigenous society and, you know, what we deem civilized is that the indigenous society utilizes paramagnetic materials within their building structures, within their farming, throughout their entire life. We use materials that are not paramagnetic whatsoever. They do not hold the Schumann resonance. They do not hold bio photons, um, any photons really. And um, because of that, we end up with, you know, sick building syndrome, the idea that we're being clouded with a bunch of foreign frequencies or toxins that are not natural. And so that, that completely has thrown us off and yeah. has debilitated our, our lifetime from 500 to 1,000 years to now, you know, even 70 to 80 years old for some of us. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. A lot of people in my family, they passed away around the age of like 50 to 60. So it's like anything that's even like 100 is just like, wow, you made it. Like that's, and but, but that by that time, you're, you're you're in like um uh an old care home facility like not really living the best life and to think that you could be 500 to 1000 years old still active and healthy is just like just seems impossible and we're told that is it's just far fetched and it's like that that just doesn't make sense to me like it does not make sense to me absolutely and it's i mean paramagnetism i've noticed is one of the hidden forms of you know hidden scientific concepts that we have not recognized is probably the center of the majority of our issue is the idea that if we because what paramagnetic materials do is they help us absorb photons they help us absorb the earth's frequency so that our cells know how to you know structure themselves they know how to reproduce they know how to you know do all the functions that a cell does and, you know, without it, we are led to dysfunction. So in order, I've found solutions to mediate it. That's my primary line of work is finding these solutions to mediate all of it. And so I, we have this earth grid map and we've, we've noticed that they build on, you know, areas that naturally, you know, they're, they're on ley lines. So on the ley lines, we've noticed when there's no pollution, the, the wildlife is bigger it's more nutrient dense and I'm assuming that is due to paramagnetism and ormus minerals. Wow. Wow. So that's what we are missing out on. And so I've found the most paramagnetic substances on this, on this planet and the, the plan to, you know, innovate and mediate all of it. And so, you know, here it is for everyone so that we, we know how to fix it, is we take, um, so there's a, an Ormus-based probiotic ceramic. And what, what, uh, what happens when a probiotic eats Ormus minerals is it starts emitting infrared light and ultraviolet light, right? Those are antipathogenic, right? That's one of 
our key our key um you know issues is that we are exposed to um these things because we're not at the right frequency wow wow right <laughs> so we take this uh it's a powder they turn it into a powder and uh the the probiotics eat the the ormus minerals inside the powder and they emit um well they they turn paramagnetic is what i'm saying and so if we take this powder and we put it in asphalt we put it in paint we put it in all the materials that we utilize to build and we don't have to tear down the cities then all we have to do is paint over it wow we build over it and then automatically all of our our issues are fixed in that moment. Oh, that sounds, um, you know, I've recently been looking into GANs and seeing how just putting like GANs around you and like living around it can literally feed you to the point where you have to eat less. And it's like, you could paint that onto buildings. That's just mind blowing. <laughs> right. Absolutely. Like the, the limit, the, we have so many limitations without the frequency being able to be held. But as soon as we have something that's able to hold it, we have limitless potential for healing, um, you know, telepathy, psychic powers, you know, <laughs> enhancing our consciousness. Wow, that is just, that's the type of stuff that just sounds like, why Why has this been, well, it makes sense why it's been suppressed, but it's like, this is so beautiful. Like, so many people are sick and cut off because people are just hiding this stuff from us. Exactly, exactly. And it's so simple too especially yeah. because of that it's just adding that ceramic powder with the with the ormus probiotics is so significant we could do that for the entire world and we would um we would be in a much better place <laughs> uh, i just i i get this idea you know you're you're building an rv right and i just can imagine like building a van or an rv or something that you travel around with and you you turn it into like this this moving ormus generator so that everything that you you pass by just is filled with life force it's just the possibilities right. are endless <laughs> oh my god yeah absolutely and i've even thought about like how we can create the our cars to be paramagnetic you know human resonance generators rather than what we uh we currently have which is just man-made uh frequencies wow <laughs> and that's simply through the ex the ceramic powder which is amazing absolutely amazing that we can just do that <laughs> yeah it's limitless this this ceramic powder that you're talking about um what can you can you kind of talk more about it like how to find it what it should do and stuff yeah so um it was created by dr tiro higa and um it's held by terraganics.com so terraganics brand and if you go on their website there's a blog and on their blog they outline how they've utilized this um orbis based probiotic they don't call it ormus based probiotic, but I know it's made from ormus because of the white flakes that um, appear during fermentation. And so um, they have used, used it in multiple scenarios in order to clear up lakes, rivers, and um, they got rid of like a bunch of algae bloom that was going, getting out of control. Um, they use it for like cattle, in, increasing um, the healthy, um, vitality of all the cattle that are within the industrial industrial system of factory farming yeah so it's a it's a paradigm shifter for all industries and so the thing about dr tiro higa though is he doesn't know how his probiotics work hmm. he never discovered how he even said even at conference he doesn't know how his probiotics work they just work and he can't replicate it. He doesn't know how to replicate it. It just works in some scenarios and some scenarios it doesn't. And so that brought me to the conclusion that, well, majority of people who are utilizing Ormus or monoatomic minerals and don't actually realize that they're using them, um, typically, that's typically what I run into. That's just the run of the mill kind of thing. Yes. Like, um, I see that with uh, Vortex Generators from OneStopEnergies.com. I see that with people who, um, you know, their oxygen therapy, there's this um, oxygen spa in, uh, in Las Vegas. And oxygen is the most paramagnetic substance right next to 
tensor rings and ormus. Mm. It's at 3000. So it's able to hold that frequency. It's, it's in water. So it's already a, an environment where ormus accumulates, but they don't say at the spa, hey, get into ormus water. Like, <laughs> you're yeah. going to be healed. Yeah. They don't know anything about it. This is a, a foreign concept that's somehow underneath everything. Wow. <laughs> That's that. So there's something um, there that I, I want to question you further on. And that's the whole the whole te tensor technology. You know, you talk about making large amount of triskelions and throwing them in bodies of water. Like just I want to hear more about the importance of something like that or what actually pushed you to do something like that. Absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, the structuring. So what pushed me to water, specifically bodies of water? is because when I was first experimenting with the sucker punch, we would have such heavy chemtrail days. And some days, you know, just skating around, it would only make a patch. And that was it. And so on days like that, sometimes we would go to a lake. And at that lake, we would skate around. And the frequency, I swear to you, was being held with, by the water. And it was being spread amongst the soil you know, that was touching the water. And so I was no longer, there was no longer just me creating the frequency in this patch in the sky. It was the body of water that was also matching me that was able to clear the sky with me. And so I was able to have clearer days through utilizing bodies of water. And so I, I realized that bodies of water can be so long and extensive and large. And so even just throwing a patch of frequency in it, will eventually spread to the entire thing. So just one triskelion <laughs> over maybe a hundred years, you're going to have structured water at some point. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. That <laughs> yeah, so it, it's a really important to gift our water. Yeah. Specifically because it touches the soil. The soil is it, it holds frequency, it holds electricity, but water is much more malleable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so it's only, it only makes sense to do the water first and then have it spread out through the land. Man, and if you, you don't have, get... if you don't have the water, then you may as well just do the land. Yeah. And it, I just, it's just like, if you get a lot of people on the same page around the world, you know, all to just put a bunch of this, this you know tensor technology into the water at once you can make a massive shift on the collective consciousness absolutely yeah and you know we're missing a lot of like you know structured clean water that's a universal thing even for even the organisms on this planet and so it's a it's a paradigm shifter to be hydrated yeah because uh, our dna is actually it's encapsulated by water if we don't drink enough water, then our DNA, it actually doesn't have a medium, uh, a little a little bubble to, for it to do its thing, for it to replicate, for it to upgrade. Man, I, it's time for me to ask some user-specific questions for myself about water. So I am, I've been through this journey of water. You know, I was doing spring water. I moved into distilled water. It wasn't doing me too well. I moved back into spring water, and I got this stuff called or a liquid gold that I've been adding to it. And, you know, I'm just trying to figure out what is, is like the ideal structured water for myself, especially since I'm starting to find that in my area, they're stopping selling water. Like you cannot find water anywhere anymore. It's like being pulled back. And it's just, it's becoming a pain to get water that actually makes me feel like I'm getting what I need from a structured water source definitely get that i definitely understand that and there's you know we've all come to some kind of solution around it so i mean i myself i found that through uh tensor rings tensor rings will actually modify the chemical constituents that are within the water so they will enhance something it. as simple as this yes yeah, something as simple as that <laughs> will enhance your water and uh completely change the chemical structure of it whatever is inside of it all the toxins will eventually be nullified or alchemized into you know beneficial minerals like magnesium and calcium and so at the end of the day it's a 
it's a combination of that plus our own intention to have a uh, clean water that's going to give us everything that we actually need. But um, essentially, the, the thing about so it doesn't matter at that point, except for the fact that the water needs to be able to be structured, right? So the most structurable water, I will tell you, is distilled water because it comes from, um, you know, it's paramagnetic water vapor. Water vapor is fairly paramagnetic, so it'll hold structure much more easily as well as frequency and light. Yeah, so st st distilled water is still at the top, but you have to mineralize it after that. Otherwise you end up with, um, you know, no electrolytes inside your body. So this is, this is where, um, the distilled water that I was, that I was buying was from like nature Valley or like mountain mist or stuff like that. And what I found is if I were to take spring water and then distilled water and let it sit for 72, 78 hours with the Euro liquid gold in it, the amount of sediment at the bottom would be the same, but the difference between the distilled water and the spring water is the spring water would have a yellow sediment at the bottom that was more noticeable, but not as dense or thick as what was at the bottom of the distilled water. And the distilled water had um, like kind of like what you could describe as a sand texture of plastic. So there was microplastics. So my next question is when it comes like if you're if you're going to get distilled water, I think there has to be a very strong distinction of the source of the distilled water and what specifically, you know, if you think about the water that you're actually distilling in your own distiller, where are you storing it afterwards and where's the water coming from and how are you structuring it and how long are you letting it sit inside of a, a chamber to actually structure it and remineralize it? There's a lot that goes into it. And I think that I kind of took just a super simple approach to it and ended up having to suffer because of it. So. I'm just curious what you think about that. Right, yeah. So I will tell you that I used oral liquid gold for about two years of my, my healing journey. And I actually could not figure out if it was doing anything. I knew that the idea of coagulation was a part of uh, the process of, you know, him explaining how it purifies the water. But at the end of the day, I also found that coagulation just happens irregardless. You wow. just have to have the right your right material, mineral, or substance within the water to create that. And so the sediment c collecting on the bottom, I had no idea if it was actually, you know, what, what they had said. So I actually got off the oral liquid gold, and then I went to reverse osmosis water and alkaline water, and I found that those two are extremely hard to structure. They take, you have to wait four to five hours before it's able to be structured. Is that the whole wake water movement thing? No, that would be Kangen water, which is the hydrogen water. Isn't that Kangen water? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, with the, the pH. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it has a, what that is, is just, it's just hydrogen. They're adding hydrogen ions to the water. And I mean, at the end of the day, it's not um sustainable. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, not sustainable I, uh... because we don't need that much hydrogen. I definitely, I was really into the king and water machine thing for like four years, manifesting it never once came. And then one day realized this is a bunch of horse shit, uh, looked into it and was like, now nah, this does absolutely nothing. Like I could, I can get just as much structure from a breeder filter or drinking my own urine, you know, like it's just, there's no point in spending $5,000 on a machine that just fucking puts a little bolt of electricity into stuff. It's just no, thank you. Yep. No, exactly. And I mean, that's just the difference between, cause you'll find that hydrogen water at the end of the day won't um it's not well compared to the oxygen water that's what they've done in uh in those spas in those spa areas and their spa treatments they've analyzed the difference between oxygen spas and hydrogen spas and they notice that the oxygen is much more healing than the hydrogen ever will be Ooh. and that just goes back to the paramagnetism i believe <laughs> so I know you follow Matt Blackburn as well. And there's something that I have seen recently on his page that has got me thinking more about water. And he talks about how most tap waters, distilled water, spring waters have a lot of calcium, which depletes us of our magnesium. So he talks about finding spring water, carbonating it, and then adding magnesium bicarbonate so that it can actually fill your body with magnesium, strip it of the calcium that's there that's blocking you from actually feeling hydration and nourish your cells. So what do you think about that? 
Yeah, I absolutely agree with that because at the end of the day, magnesium bicarbonate was one of the constituents that was a part of spring water, like from the beginning. And so to have us um, to have us have lost it has been a, even more of a detriment to our our ability to hold frequency inside of our own body, as well as multiple thousands of functions inside of our own body. And so I, I myself, I go for water and I structure it as if it was going to be, as if it was going to be like existent in nature. So it would have the fulvic acid, it would have the humic acid, it would have those crystalline structures, you know, you know how that goes with the rivers and the, the waterfalls, there's a lot of rocks, there's a lot of crystalline structure that goes into uh, structuring that water that comes off the mountain. Okay. Yeah. And then, um, what was that last thing? Oh, yeah. So you were saying something about calcium and magnesium, you know, that, that whole having that, that right ratio, because you have to have two magnesiums to one calcium. And so what the tensor rings do is they alchemize the water into that ratio. They've actually analyzed the chemical, you know, the chemical structure between the water that wasn't charged and the water that was charged. And they found that it created that exact ratio. And it was created from the chemical constituents, even the toxins, toxins that were, um, you know, structured into a, a completely different chemical structure. All right. So we're going to run through some basic things to hit different levels of understanding and also different levels of needs. So let's kind of go from the basic perspective. Let's say you're at home. All you have is tap water. You don't have any money. You can't go out and buy, you know, any out external source of water, stuff to add to the water or anything. And you're at home. What are you doing? What do you recommend? What do you think step one is? And then we can kind of work up through the levels to what you consider the best for your money. Okay, gotcha. So I mean, I'm a I'm a little unorthodox here. I've I've <laughs> thought about this very uh, very detailed. So I used to conduct a ritual with blissful abundance, you know, and um, that was about that was last year. That was a year and a half ago. We did that for at least a full year, and it's called Agnihotra. So Agnihotra is this Vedic fire ritual. They take a copper pyramid. They take uh, the offerings of uh, a bovine or, you know, a cow, an indigenous cow um, from India. And uh, they offer rice into uh, a pit of the, the, copper, the, the copper pyramid and they burn it. And they recite these, uh, these four mantras. And with these four mantras at, um, sun, at sunset and sunrise, they will, they will chant for either, you know, what they need, which is uh, either a clear sky for uh for their for their plants or they can chant for rain so if you could chant for rain and you're secluded enough then you're able to collect that rain and you automatically have structured ormus based water i would say ormus based because the mantras are frequency based you're creating a, a vortex of because the the ritual itself creates a, a vortex from the, the the fire the fire is the element that facilitates the vortex and the frequency wow yeah. so we're able to call down rain and we're able to clear the sky whenever we want it's uh just a matter of knowing these techniques when stuff goes down and being in the right place to be able to do them so that we're not just like canceled out and like oh you can't do that like you know burning uh burning uh Burning anything in a city is very hard without yes. being able to, like, be called out. Yeah. Absolutely. So that's why I do tell people, like, get away from the city because then you can do what you want. You know, we're, we're limitless with this information. We just need to get to the right place with the right people. Yeah, 100% agree with that. Wow. <laughs> wow. But then our secondary option is urine. Yeah, yeah. Always. So, you know, urine, even, uh, even though... Um, because, you know, there's been a lot of FUD on, um, on Instagram about it. And so what I want to clear up is the idea that though it has, may have during year in the last list, they have told us that there's toxins in it, that there's plenty of other things in it. It's able to be structured, like I said. So 
with the tensor rings, you know, all the chemical constituents will be, you know, modified and alchemized to whatever you're intended, whatever you're intending. And so we can more than likely survive off that longer than we think if we were to be utilizing tensor rings. And that's, you know, any emergency scenario, that's why it keeps coming up. It's the collective telling us, if, if you have to do it, do it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's that's something that, you know, I've been dabbling around with for the past year. You know, I went from I went from snorting the first um, pee of the day completely and then looping the rest of the day. And I, I went through a whole bunch of diets. I went through like the vegan diet, the whole food diet, the raw diet to just liquids to just urine and kind of just really experimented with it and like went around with my diet. And, you know, now I'm on the I'm on the raw dairy and raw eggs like as a vegan well not vegan i guess <laughs> but like with whole food plant-based stuff and just kind of experimenting around and what i found is that there's this really weird balance that i'm trying to understand when it comes to because too much too much urine because of its potent you know healing and detoxifying nature in such a highly sensitive climate where everything is meant to, you know, poison you or fill you with toxins can cause very adverse and fast reactions. And if you're constantly emptying yourself just to be filled back up, then you can be doing more damage to yourself than good. So it's like you have to be aware of where you're at, what you're facing, because you don't, you, the, the, right now, our main focus is to not put stress on our body because it's already being stressed out. And so I think that there's, you have to understand that you can use urine to survive off of but don't try to detoxify your body if it's being equally toxified every single day by your surrounding and that's something that i'm finding is because it was doing a lot more harm than good you know i i was like trying to regrow my hair and grow muscle and like fix my teeth and my gums and i found that what was happening is i was falling apart because i was putting my body in such a stressful state that it literally could not keep up with its with its maintenance and so i now i have to dial it back get into some things that i'm not necessarily comfortable with and not drink as much urine but in return i'm i'm more capable of being calm and centered and actually doing the work that i'm meant to be doing and it's like oh i can't rush into things i have to go with what my body's telling me to do this is my body's game not my mind so i'm gonna listen to my body right yeah i absolutely agree like it's it's a long journey for many of us we've been yes. fed environmental toxins of all kinds of all in all places for years upon years and so i feel that many of us you know, our, um, you know, we suffered a lot of trauma in our organs, you know, we're not taught about organ trauma and how the emotions are associated with it. Not only just the toxins, but the emotions. And so yeah. I feel that, you know, us over here specifically, you know, we have uh, a lot of organ trauma to work through and a lot of organ healing before we can even get to that, that point where we're able to, you know, just feed our organs, you know, all these, you know, all these things or even like, uh, you know, fruit feasts, you know, that's <laughs> work for your kidneys, all that stuff's just work for your kidneys. Like, yeah, it's doing it and it's going to keep doing it. But at the end of the day, everything needs a break. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And that's, that's the one thing that I've really been starting to understand is you have to think that everything on the planet is as equally intelligently designed as you are, which means that to think that it's just something that's put there to tempt you is completely ill-minded. Everything has a purpose. Everything is a medicine. And when you understand its purpose, you can use everything for what it's truly meant to be used for. And I think that that's so beautiful. And you can really take note from shamans who would, who would only eat a certain plant with it or a certain plant for an extended period of time and sit with it. And it would be like, hey, this is what I do. And I can do all of these things when paired with other things. Then you're like, Ah, uh, everything is intelligent. <laughs> it's awesome. I feel like we got through a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. <sighs> okay. So, I give my spiel on the Earth grid. <laughs> so, I mean, if you have any other... Uh, any other topics you want to talk about? 
Otherwise, I'm going to hop off here and get some business done, yeah. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. This was an extremely information-packed, dense conversation. And I think that we should just have some time to sit and digest with this. So thank you so much for speaking with me today. Yes, absolutely, brother. And I, I hope I hope to have a, another topic to speak with you about very soon. Yeah, listen here, I'm the student and you're the teacher. Anytime you have anything to say, just let me know. <laughs> grateful. grateful to have this platform, grateful to have you and grateful for everyone that was listening and kept, popped in, said hi, you know, and um, feel, oh, somebody said, why do you think Congan water is pointless? No, we never said it was pointless. I just said it was inferior to oxygen water. <laughs> yes. Uh, all right. Wow. <laughs> Blessings, bro. Blessings to you. I'm going to hop off here. Much right. love, y'all. Yeah, peace and love, everybody. <laughs> oh, all righty.